with the destruction of the five lower fetters, he has appeared spontaneously. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> with the destruction of the five lower fetters, he has been reborn spontaneously in the pure abodes and will there attain final Nibbana without ever returning from that world. So this indicates, as you had, you had said, that certainly by the end of the sutta, with his death, <coughs> the Brahman Brahmayu had become a non-returner. <coughs> and he does... I don't know what's happened to my voice just now. <coughs> this <coughs> so <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> don't go out of the building. You have, okay. <clears throat> okay, what are the five lower fetters that he's cut off? Oh, you know already. As, as, when? Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. Specifically, more specific, not all craving. Go on to the last one. We'll come back to it. Right, ill will. The fourth one is specifically craving for sensual pleasures. To be reborn, there still has to be some craving for continued existence. But he's, so he's cut off the five lower fetters. So apparently, <clears throat> okay, the first is called, we could say the view of self, the view of a truly existing self. The second is doubt, doubt about the Buddha and his teaching. Okay, thank you. The third is the wrong grasp of, sometimes called wrong grasp of rules and observances, or clinging to rules and observances. Fourth is craving for sensual pleasures. And the fifth is ill will or anger. Okay, so those are five of the ten fetters, but even the non-returner still has five subtle fetters remaining. What are the five subtle fetters? I know you're doing your homework, you're doing your homework. Who has to do that? I want to get the veterans. <laughs> Anybody want to try? Okay, Osman, you. Go again. Yeah. Right. Right. Right, exactly. Okay, excellent. Okay, so the craving for existence in the form realm, existence for ex a craving for existence in the formless realm, Conceit, especially the conceit I am, 
restlessness and ignorance. Now, all of you should be doing, in a sense, doing your homework so that when I say, what are the five lower fetters, every hand comes up. When I say, what are the five subtle fetters, every hand comes up. Okay, so with the destruction of the five lower fetters, he is reborn spontaneously. What does it mean that you're reborn spontaneously? Isn't everybody reborn spontaneously? What does it mean? Excuse me? There is a birth, there is a birth, but what about that birth? It's quick, yeah, but something specific. Oh, yeah, that's another point, but it wasn't quite what I was thinking of. Okay, it's quick, fully formed. Well, there is a physical body there in the form realm. Excuse me? It is a higher realm because it says, well, when one is, I say the non returner is not reborn in the human realm. That's why he's called non returner. So it's a different realm. But what makes it spontaneous rebirth? Quick, fully formed. Right, right. Yeah, it's not born through a sexual union so that there's no mother and father, but when just with the expiration from this life, one appears probably immediately or quickly, the body fully formed and, you know, without going through a process of maturation in a womb. It seems this is my hypothesis that probably the Brahmin, through his earlier spiritual training, you know, is in a, as a Brahmin, would have had a very like well-developed mind, you know, not like a regular person, you know, who has to engage in a lot of business. Running.
you know, you see, doubt will naturally arise up to the, this is speaking about what happens at the stage of stream entry. Okay, so one has to like sort of practice step by step, then one starts to see more and more aspects of the Dhamma. So in this way, you know, the doubt is getting reduced, but there's still that tendency to doubt could still be there. But it's when one reaches that point where one, the way it's phrased here, when there arises the spotless, immaculate, I don't like so much either, spotless, vi rajang, vi vimalang, spotless, stainless vision of the Dhamma, all that is subject to arising is subject to cessation. Then one sees the Dhamma, attains the Dhamma, understands the Dhamma. That's like directly seeing the truth, so then doubt is eliminated. Like, for example, Okay, say, I, okay. <laughs> Suppose um, <laughs> I tell you I have a pen in my pocket. You could think, okay, he's a trustworthy person. So, um, you know, I could believe him. But still, you know, you could raise doubts. Of course, a pen isn't a big object of doubt, but if I say that the pen is your key to, to salvation, <laughs> then you can have some doubts about that. But, um, so as long as you don't see the pen, then you could still have doubts, even though, you know, on numerous occasions I've always been a true to my word. But if I take the pen out and show it to you, then you see the pen, so then you have no doubt at all that I have a pen in my hand. Of course, in the case of a pen, it could just be a dummy which doesn't really have a function of writing. But with the Dhamma, when you see the truth, then you know it's the truth. Okay, I think we'll have to end the session now. Oh, okay, Cla Claudia? Yeah, I was going to speak about that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little bit of sad news, but you see, the monastery, they asked me not to hold classes during the winter because normally during the regular part of the year, they pay insurance. But during the three months of the winter, they don't want to pay insurance. And so in order for students to come on a regular basis, they have to have insurance. So we won't have classes during the winter. This will be like the last class of the fall semester, fall session. But we'll start again in April, and an announcement will come out in April. So this will be a time, if you want, you can, you know, the discourses here are all recorded. So it could be like discourses, that you missed, or discourses you might have attended, but you want to review them. So if you just go onto the website of BAUS, Buddhist Association of the United States, then you find in the left-hand column, you see my name is there, and you click on that, and then you'll see, what they call these, the links to where all of the recordings are stored. And then you can review the lectures and learn the things that should be learned. <laughs> yeah. So then when we come back in April, then we'll have like a new schedule of classes for April, April, May, June. And then through the summer we'll have the classes. Yeah. I really haven't fixed on any. I haven't fixed on anything to translate yet. I haven't determined what to translate next. Maybe it's been enough translation for one life. 
Okay, so we end. We'll come back if people have questions, comments. We could have a little more discussion. Say twelve ten. We come back for some discussion. Okay, so we end with the sharing of the merits. And maybe let us dedicate the merits today to the children who perished yesterday in that violent incident, as well as to the parents and brothers and sisters and friends who survive, and also to the killer himself, the demented killer and his family, who must also be suffering from that act. Akasa ta chabuma ta deva naga mahitika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu sasanang Akasa ta chabuma ta deva naga mahitika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu desanang Akasa ta chabuma ta deva naga mahitika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu mang parang eta vata cha am hehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe deva anumodantu sabha sampati siddhya eta vata cha am hehi Sampadang punya sampadang sabe bhutanu modantu sabha sampati sadhya eta vata cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe satanu modantu sabha sampati sadhya bhavagu padaya avici hetato E tanta re sata kayu papana rupi a rupi cha sanya sanino tu ka pamu chantu pusantu nibuting. Yeah, and I remembered what else I wanted to say regarding that killing that took place yesterday. I say, what we have to do, part of our responsibility. Not at this point. Wait till the next Congress becomes inaugurated or commences. Then call your representative and tell them, please implement the strictest gun control laws possible. And don't let them hem and haw and say that it's not guns that it killed it's not guns that kill people, it's people that kill people. But tell them that. And if you call your representative, you know, they don't answer the phone themselves, but it's always a, a secretary that will answer the phone. But you leave a message, and that message will get to them. And if they are responsive, I mean, what I'm told is that they do respond to pressure from their constituents. So you let them know that this is an issue that you feel deeply concerned about. And then there are various petitions you find on the internet. There's mayors for gun control. That's in New York City, other cities. But since we're not in the big city, there must be some organizations also that are collecting signatures to present to the to the congress people okay we end now with three bows to the buddha
Okay.